Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at switch speeds and forwarding methods. We'll be discussing frame forwarding methods on switches, cut through switching, memory buffering on switches, duplex and speed settings, and finally, we're going to look at auto MDIX. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks for the Cisco Certified Networking Associate, also known as the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. On Cisco switches, there are two types of frame forwarding methods. First method is store and forward. The second method is cut through. Store and forward receives the entire frame in. Once the switch gets that in, the switch performs a cyclic redundancy check and it calculates a value. It compares this, the value the switch just came up with to the value that's in the trailer. If those two match, the frame is considered valid. There's been no errors, no changes to it. And then it looks up the destination address. At that point in time, the frame is forwarded out the correct port to its destination. Cut through switching forwards a frame before the entire frame is loaded. You just get a small part in and we start sending it out right away. The destination address is red once we get a little bit in and then we start sending it out. With the store and forward method, there are several advantages. First advantage is the store and forward method determines if there's an air with the frame before it propagates it through the network. It uses that cyclic redundancy check, it, the, the switch calculates and compares it to the cyclic redundancy check that was attached at, on the trailer. If there's an error, it, the switch discards that frame. This reduces the bandwidth by eliminating that corrupted data. So we're not propagating bad data through the network. This store and forward method is required for quality of service analysis. For streaming technologies, voice over IP, you need to have store and forward switching enabled. Cut through switching reacts to the data as soon as that header is in. As soon as that destination MAC address is in, the switch receives it, it then starts processing that data. It starts processing it even before the switch has received all of it in. So potentially, it could still be receiving that in and sending it out already. It buffers just enough of that information to be able to see where's that, where's this frame going, what's the destination MAC address, and then sends it out the right port. There is no air checking with this whatsoever. Now, there are two variants here on the cut through switching. One is the fast forward switching and the other one is the fragment free switch switching. Fast forward switching is the fastest one. It gets that destination MAC address in there and sends it out. With this, it could send frames on that have errors in it. It could propagate errors through your network, thereby eating up your bandwidth. Fragment free switching is a compromise. What fragment free switching does is it accepts in the first 64 bytes of the frame. And remember, bytes are either are between 64 bytes and 1500 bytes long. So it accepts in this first 64 bytes of the frame, it goes through, it looks at it, it processes it, it sees if there's an error. It makes the assumption, and correctly so, that the first 64 bytes, that, are, that is where the errors are going to occur. So a lot we make the assumption here that if the, the error is not in the first 64 bytes, the rest of the frame is going to be air free. We can go ahead and send this through. You're not propagating bad information, but you're not having to store the entire frame. I hope you're liking this episode on switch speeds and forwarding methods. If you have the time, please leave a comment and let me know what you think about switch speeds and forwarding methods. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. When the switch has to store a frame, it uses memory. And there's two types of memory buffering on these switches, port-based memory and shared memory. Port-based memory, frames are stored in queues that are linked to specific incoming and outgoing ports. The frame is transmitted to an outgoing port only when all the frames ahead of it 
in the queue have been successfully transmitted. It's possible for a single frame here to delay the transmission of all the frames in memory. This delay even occurs if other frames could be transmi transmitted on open ports other than the one we're trying to send on. Shared memory, all the memory is, is in one group. It's a common memory buffer here. It's shared by all the ports on there and the amount of buffer memory required by a port is dynamically allocated. So the switch can decide how much memory a port gets. The frames in the buffer are dynamically linked to the destination port, enabling a packet to be received on one port and then transmitted on another port without moving queues. So we don't have to change queues like we did in the port-based memory. Switches have different speed and duplex settings. The speed on switches can be set and is typically dictated by the model of the switch you're buying. The, the typical speeds we see connecting to end devices nowadays are Ethernet, fast Ethernet, and gigabit. In data centers, we do see 10 gigabit there, but once again, Ethernet is 10 megs per second, fast Ethernet is a maximum of 100 megs per second, gigabit is a maximum of gig per second. Then we also can look at duplex. Duplex, we're talking about how can communication happen? Duplex, communication happens in both ways, but half duplex, communication only happens in one direction at a time. Full duplex, we can communicate in both directions at one time. Half duplex would be an example of a walkie talkie or a CB where you have to push a button to talk. When you have that button pushed, you can't hear what's being broadcast. But as soon as you release that, another person could push their button in and then they could talk to you and you can hear it. So you can both transmit and receive, but you can't do it at the same time. Full duplex, the example of that would be talking on a telephone. You can talk and listen at the same time on the telephone. Ports on switches, they're they can be set up for auto negotiation. What auto negotiation does is it auto negotiates the fastest, best connection possible. As we look at speed and duplex settings, one of the biggest areas where errors can occur is when you have a duplex mi mismatch. One device is broadcasting in full duplex, the other device is broadcasting in half duplex. And so because of that, while the one device is broadcasting in half duplex, it's either transmitting or receiving at the same time, the full duplex is transmitting at the same time and receiving. Data will have a collision on that network. Errors will occur. And so we need to make sure we configure our devices correctly so we don't get this Get these errors. Devices once required that you use either the straight through or the crossover cable to in order to be communicating. Remember the rules. For a crossover cable, you have to you're, you're connecting like devices, PC to PC, switch to switch, router to router. With there's one exception when you connect PC to router, you have to use a crossover. All other connections, you use a straight through cable. So from a switch to an end device, switch to a PC, that's a straight through. From a PC to a router, that's a, that's a crook. From a PC to a switch, that's a straight through cable. From a switch to a router, that's a straight through cable. Several years ago, they came up with this auto MDEX, the automatic medium dependent interface crossover. What this does is the switch, the networking device, automatically detects what type of cable you need and changes your cable to match that. So you're, you're connecting up two switches. You need a crossover there, but with auto MDEX, and auto MDEX is on by default. If you put a straight through in there, 
one of those switches will change the electronics inside of it to make that cable appear as a crossover cable. So auto MDX, MDIX changes the cables for you from a straight through to a crossover. It's enabled by default from Cisco, but Cisco recommends you don't rely on it. That you do not rely on the auto MDEX. Now, reasons for that, it could be disabled. And you assume that it's enabled and you just randomly plug in cables. If you plug in the wrong one, it's not going to work. What Cisco wants you to do is always use the right type of cables. And as you're going through these episodes, please remember... We want you to use the right cables. We want you to learn how to do that. Don't rely on that auto MDEX. If it is disabled, you can go back and you can re-enable it. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on switch speeds and forwarding methods. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, aptechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.